Believe it or not, one year ago, I hated photography. Okay, hate is a really strong word. Let's just say I, I didn't like photography. Like, I really didn't like it. So it's been one whole year of doing photography and although I love it now, that wasn't always the case. I was heavily getting into creating video content. Dilly and I were traveling all over and I was really enjoying and loving creating travel videos. When it came to our Instagram and our YouTube thumbnails, I kind of just passed all that to Dilly as I didn't like taking photographs and I pretty much had no interest at all doing photography. I guess I saw photography as it was less creative, that all you do is actually just take photos of things that already exist. Now, while this is definitely a passion for many, many photographers out there, it just wasn't really something for me as I thought that that's as far as photography could take you. Now, that was before I got exposed to the really creative side of photography. Get his technique in his movement. <laughs> his technique in movement. <laughs> Things like experimenting with props, with different models, making your subject levitate, mucking around with things like paint powder, taking action shots, Geordie Coalitic style. It was these kinds of photos that really made me change shooting from automatic to manual. I guess in a way I, I found fulfillment in taking these kinds of photos and that actually started to tip the scales for me. I started enjoying taking these kinds of photos a lot more than creating video. So once I found this new creative way of taking photos, what did I do? I got to work. I started going around the streets of London just taking photos of anything and everything just so that I could understand how to use manual and how to shoot in manual. Things like learning about um, ISO, aperture, shutter speed, which by the way is hell confusing at the, at the start. It just sounds like it's very overwhelming. So if you're just starting out yourself and you feel overwhelmed, don't worry about it. We've all been there, we've all gone through it. Literally just stick with it and um, you'll slowly start to understand it better and better the more you actually practice taking photos. So about a month later, I ended up moving back home to Australia for three and a half months. And then this happened. Right here in New York, thousands of people are self quarantining at home after they made contact with the coronavirus. The world stopped. The borders to many countries closed, public transport was silent, and every street seemed like a ghost town. Travel, being something we all took for granted, suddenly became a memory and a dream all at the same time. So I guess I wasn't going anywhere soon. So I continued learning as much as I could, uh, using platforms like YouTube, Skillshare, working countless hours both day and night. And before I knew it, I ended up starting my own media business. So I had to figure out how to do the business side as well as the creative. The money I was making, I invested back into my business and I eventually ended up getting a new camera and some new lenses, and a new laptop, and a Gorillapod. Along the whole way, I was constantly updating my portfolio with higher quality work, which attracted a few more clients here and there. Am I now finally financially secure with doing photography as a career? Hell no. I am lucky enough to be living back with my parents who have put a roof over my head during this pandemic. With that said, moving back in with your parents can be daunting and can feel really feel like you're taking a step backwards. Especially when nearly all of the people I've uh, gone to school with and all the friends I've grown up with are getting houses, starting families. It feels as if they're so far ahead in life than I am. This was something I had to face and I had to really think about in terms of choosing to chase after a career that I really want to make happen. Even though I know it's going to be difficult, that doesn't stop me. Like that doesn't stop me wanting to take that risk because to be honest for myself personally, uh, sec like security, a stable job, a steady paycheck every week, it was never something that was so important to me growing up. I was always encouraged by my parents to always chase my dreams, whatever they were, I didn't realize what I wanted to do for a very long time and that dawned on me as well. But now that I've finally figured it out, I sort of figured out what I wanted to achieve and what my goals are, I 
feel as if I am a bit older. I am definitely older when I figured this out, but I don't allow that to stop me from trying to just hit the reset button and moving back in with your parents to make this happen. If there's anyone out there in a similar situation to this, whatever the reason, I want you to know that it is okay to move back in with your parents if you are fortunate enough to have a good enough relationship with them that they are willing to take you back in so that they can help you hit the reset button just so that you can go down a path that you truly care about. If this decision makes sense for you, then that's all that matters. And don't allow yourself to live in the fear or give into the fear of what other people might think of you because that doesn't matter. Your true friends will support you no matter what. I'm lucky enough to have grown up with a group of mates that completely get you and understand what you're going through. And that's just another boost of support that's there to help you through to achieving your goals. Now, if there's one thing that we can all agree on, it's that this year has been, it's been a weird year. And even though I couldn't go back overseas to see Dilly, I thought, well, this is out of my control. What can, what kind of control can I take back? I wanted to make sure that I would look back at this year and be able to say that I've done my very best, that I've learnt new skills, I started eating right, exercising more, looking after my mental health. I literally do my best to look after every aspect of my life to help propel myself towards my future goals of one day owning a photography, owning and running a photography studio, as well as end up getting a house. But the main one that I'm really looking forward to is building my own camper van and living the van life with Dilly for I don't even know how long, like for how, however long we love doing it. Now the amount of time that actually goes into learning and actually allowing a style to form is ridiculous. And I really believe that not anyone can do photography or video work. I feel as if if you're doing this for the money, you're not going to make it. Having the love and the passion for doing something like this is really what's going to get you to that point of success. Then again, what really is success? The way I see it, um, doing something that you actually love doing and you're happy about it, that there is success, isn't it? And to be honest, I still feel a lot of the times like I have no idea what I'm doing but that's part of the process. You put yourself into these situations and you learn from it and you figure it out along the way. I've still got such a long road ahead of me and I wouldn't expect anything less. After all, it has only been one year.